uh-huh battery drained charge vehicle now All right, welcome back again to the VWID Talk podcast. Thanks so much to all you folks for subscribing. It really means the world to us. Remember, you can also catch us on your audio podcast platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, and Overdrive, uh, and subscribe so you don't miss these. Because today, uh, Jan and I took one for the team and drove our VWs down to 0% state of charge. Uh, Jan did his on purpose, and I did mine by accident. Uh but we both did it at the same time to report back here to you. Uh, so we want to answer a few questions about what happens when you drive your ID4 to zero. zero. Yep. yep. So this is how it looks. And we just want to prove that, yes, we did it. And uh, the this is also a teaser for another video that we have done, how I retrofitted these uh, Skoda um, buttons into the ID4. So yeah. Wes, what were the top burning questions that we were wondering in this uh, drive to zero test. Yeah, so the questions we want to know is, is the GOM, the guess o meter accurate when it tells you how many miles are remaining? So when you get down to 5%, it tells you 20 miles. Is that right? How accurate is it? How does the car drive and behave when it gets below 5% is one of the things like, so are you, is it reducing power? Um, are you going is it jerking? to get, is it? Yeah, right. Are you getting warnings or lights and buzzers going off? Nope. And then finally, what happens when it gets to 0% state of charge? And the photo that Jan just showed you, not only was it 0%, it was also zero miles. So both things said zero miles remaining, 0%. What's the matter with you? Charge your car. Um, exactly. Exactly. So let's roll the video and then okay. we'll discuss at the end. All right. So this is our experiment where we run the ID4 to zero, 9% remaining, 22 miles remaining. We started from 80%. We ran it down over multiple days. When we look at since charge, we driven 173 miles and oh, somebody ran out of gas here on the highway. Huh, interesting. So let's see what happens when we are closer to zero, how the car would behave and how many miles we'll be able to drive before it stops. And well, of course, wrench inside is pumping, but I have uh, three kilowatt hours of battery in my trunk. So hopefully that would be a uh, good rescue when I'm stopping at some convenient destination. And I'm thinking about a church parking lot I think God knows, God knows why I'm thinking about a church parking lot as the destination to run the last few, squeeze the last few electrons from the battery. And we are still sitting on a 10 miles range. There is a beautiful Ionic 6. Much more aerodynamic, so lower consumption. Okay, anyway. Okay, 9 miles remaining range and the mileage since 80% charge is mileage driven is 186. Beautiful. All right, perfect day to drive without a C, I must admit. 91 outside. Great. We hit the same percentage and mileage. So at 2% state of charge, we have uh, two miles remaining. Yay! Oh, uh huh. Battery drained charge vehicle now zero percent and zero miles remaining still 50 percent of power is remaining so still works but the question is for no not this one the next one for how long all right ladies and gentlemen so i guess this concludes our exercise. The car still drives. It's amazing. 0% state of charge, zero miles. Yeah, there still can be a couple miles. Aha, charge vehicle now. Otherwise the battery may be damaged. Okay, so we'll definitely do that. So now I know you were asking, okay, how do we, uh, 
get it juiced up. So um, I have some whole house backup here that I borrowed for this experiment. The charging cable is in our frank, plugged in. So both at 100%. Thinking, I heard a click. All right, three point seven kilowatts, three point seven kilowatts. All right, so we are pumping in. How much? Oh, oh, this is so cool. This is so. Cool. I've never seen it so multi-color. See, that's awesome. Like from green, uh, from green all the way at the other end to orange and red. I, I love this car. All right. Anyway. Um, so the charging has started, 6.5 uh, kilowatt is being pumped in. Okay, so in uh, 18 minute charging we have 2.3 kilowatt hours in. These are chugging strong, they still have more than half of the capacity. And the car is now reporting, and the car is now reporting 6 miles, 2% state of charge, so I think it's time to drive to the next charger. First of all, I'll say that this mirrored my experience, except that I did not have uh, three and a half kilowatt hours of, of juice in my trunk. Um, so I, neither one of us were willing to keep driving after 0% to see, uh, you heard the scary message that Jan said, charge, charge now or your battery may be damaged. So um, that is scary. Uh, let's, let's talk about, is the remaining gasometer, the GOM, estimate accurate? And so you said yes. Mm -hmm. It was as long as it, you it, continue. It was linear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, okay. Yeah. If if you continue in the same driving conditions, what I mean by that, well, if the next day is uh, uh, su super below freezing, and then you had twenty miles the the previous day, then probably <laughs> yes. um, you will drive less. Right. right, but it was right. pretty so, linear uh, up to a a single mile, so it it was great. Yeah, and how fast were you driving on the highway? Uh, uh, sixty. I um be, okay. drive sixty here. Um, uh, it's slow here in Washington. So about hundred kilometer is sixty. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so uh, yeah, and so and it was ninety degrees Fahrenheit, ninety one. So really yeah. good conditions to very good. I have to worry too much about mm -hmm. damaging your battery. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty accurate when it said nine yep. miles, and you drove nine more miles. It was about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. And so how does it drive and behave below 5%? You said you noticed that there was less power output. Of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've seen that you actually see on your, uh, below the gas o meter, uh, mm -hmm. there are these two uh, pumps, right? Or uh, those two bars, the one green yeah. that says uh, recuperation and the blue one is your maximum power. I think I'm not mm, switching it. No, you're and right. And then um, the maximum available power was at 60 per, uh, sorry 50 percent half of it so if you floored it it didn't of course jump as as mm -hmm. if you are above 10 or 20 percent state of right. charge or higher on state of charge and when you floored it did the uh does the all-wheel drive does the front motor still engage in this mode did I, you notice? I can't tell that's okay. uh, that's something that would need to be uh, probably tested on ice <laughs> yeah. or and probably also maybe with a uh with the dongle that tells us yeah, what's on exactly power. what power goes where. Yeah. So yeah. we're not sure, but it definitely showed that less power was available. Less power. And it is for a reason. The reason is to protect the battery because if you floor it, that means that there's a power spike that may uh, provide such a um, drain on the battery that the battery goes below certain voltage that already may damage the battery. So they do it on purpose to protect the battery. Yeah. So the good news here, well, we'll get to that in a second. I mean, what happens when you get out to zero? The answer is the car still drives, but it yes. keeps nagging you. Please, there's, yes. you don't have buzzers and lights, but you have please charge. Exactly. So charge I was, now. because we all hear about this turtle mode or limp mode. And I thought that when I hit zero, zero, I'll immediately get the limp mode, but that was not the case. It, it mm -hmm. still showed the 50% remaining. So I was probably driving into the buffer that you mentioned that is built mm -hmm. in to protect the battery. Yeah. So the, the unknown questions are, we don't know how much the buffer is. And because this is Jan's car, his personal car, you know, uh, neither one of us wants to intentionally drive our car to the point where it brings up the turtle mode because, you know, this is the long-term health of our, of our battery. At that point, 
The good news is that Volkswagen has written the software such that it reduces power output to protect your battery. So yes. it probably still would not have damaged your battery if you had done that, but they're doing that to keep you from damaging it. Exactly. And and it's I not... would not do it. I would not try to do it uh, right. even for testing because why? Right. That There's yeah. no reason. If it says 20 miles, okay, I need to plan to charge the vehicle within 20 miles or now. Right. Yeah. So and don't so, count on any negative miles. That's the point. Yeah. But the good news is somebody's watching this that doesn't have an, an EV. Um, you know, I almost, I, I think I've only forgotten to charge my car uh, less than a handful of times since I had it. And I had a long way to go one day and I left. And when I got in the car, it was at 24%. And I was like, oh, now I got to drive. I've got errands to run all over the place. And that's the day when I got home. Um, with zero percent remaining and it, you know i had four miles and three miles and then zero miles my daughter's like daddy we're not going to make it home and, and we're going to make it home right and so the, the good news is that they have planned for this they've done a lot of work in software and that you really don't need to worry as much about you know your range anxiety as you think if i were on a long trip maybe that would have been more concerning but yeah you know i agree it, you also might be wondering um that when i was charging the car in the parking lot, uh, the the charger uh, or the the batteries that I had, I had two batteries, so it was two phase uh, charging, like level two charging. Uh, mm -hmm. So the the system was pumping out seven point four kilowatts, but the car showed something like between uh, six five and seven. So where is the loss? Well, the problem I think is that because the batteries in those portable batteries. It's a stored SDC, so you have to um, switch it into um, AC. You have to convert it into AC, and then the car converts it again from AC into DC. Plus, there yeah. are some loss in the charger, etc. So, so I played with different charging speeds. Of course, I charge charge it on the max because I really wanted to be done as soon as possible. Yeah. But if you charge it at slower speeds. Um, let's say if I wouldn't be pumping 7.5 kilowatts, but half of it, then the efficiency is a little better on, on the conversion. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's the car because our car goes up to 11 kilowatts. So technically at the seven kilowatts, it's roughly at the half of what it can do. So I don't think that the loss is too much on the car conversion. Right. I think it's on in the in the portable battery conversion. That's that's actually my hypothesis that here. But sense. if you know, just uh, um, share down below in the comments. Yes, please. All right. Well, that's a good experiment, and it, it's just nice to know that uh, this happened to happen to me right when we were planning on. Jan said, "Hey, we should do a zero percent uh, episode." And I was like, "Well, as it happens, I just drove my car to zero percent, and." Uh, and it, it performed very admirably. So well done, Volkswagen, with the, yep. with the software. Yep. Totally. At least this software does a really great job. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, great. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, hopefully you got some information, some peace of mind about this. And uh, stay tuned for our uh, next episode. Thank you. Bye.